Hey guys, welcome back. So in this episode, I want to talk about a really interesting company that recently announced that they're going to go public via SPAC merger. Now the stock I'm going to be talking about today is Black Sky. That's going to be merging with Osprey Technology Acquisition Corp or SFTW. Now for some background, Black Sky is a leading real-time geospatial intelligence, imagery, and data analytics company. Now what's really exciting is that they have a first mover advantage in the real-time Earth observation industry. They also have a large and expanding market opportunity with a total addressable market of around 40 billion. Now although Black Sky is still in its early stages, it has some near-term high visibility pipeline and revenue growth. They have a $1.7 billion pipeline of already committed contracts. And since they have a software business model, that means that they have really high gross margins, around 75%. What's also good to see is that they have notable investors investing in this company, such as Peter Thiel and Shmoth Paliapatiya leading the pipe. So with that quick background out of the way, let's dive right into what this company is all about and see if it could be a good long-term investment. So let's first do a company overview of Black Sky. Now they monitor the global economy in real time. By observing the real world in real time and detecting and monitoring global activity, they're able to understand and predict change. Now a quick overview of Black Sky is that they're a first mover in real-time Earth observation. They have a $40 billion total addressable market. They have 23 small sats in orbit by 2023. 90% of 2021 and 2022 are contracted and followed on. They have attractive gross margins with 75% gross and 45 adjusted EBITDA. And they have $1.7 billion in existing pipeline with 85% from existing customers. They claim that they're a leading real-time sensor agnostic data and analytics software platform, and they're also vertically integrated with SmallSat and space data architecture. Last year in 2020, they did about 22 million. This year, they're forecasting 46 million, and they expect revenue to bloom over the next four to five years. Now we can see Black Sky's management team. The CEO is Brian O'Tooley, who's the founder and CEO, which is always good to see, who also held other CEO and CTO roles in other companies. Now, Black Sky believes that they have a disruptive economic model. One impressive thing is that they have the lowest cost imaging capture. We can see legacy satellite imagery is around $120,000. However, Black Sky imagery is 90% cheaper at around $12,000. This in turn helps drive capital efficiency and operating leverage. We can see that lower satellite costs mean lower data costs, which mean higher utilization rates and into their software layer. What this really helps is better unit economics and higher operating leverage, which in turn helps with a greater return on assets. Now they have a fully operational software technology stack. Now I won't dive into this too much, but we can clearly see that they have real-time earth observation sensor networks with other data sources, which help feed into the customer applications where they're able to put everything into a proprietary data lake. They can then use AI and machine learning modules, allowing them for better advanced analytics. We can see that they're able to scale into the cloud and they're able to have multiple integrations with other APIs. Now, as we touched on earlier, their artificial intelligence and machine learning modules help deliver valuable insights. We can see it's everything from event detection, computer vision, change detection, routing prediction, and time series analysis. So as we all know, in the 21st century, data is an invaluable goldmine, and they believe that their proprietary data is their competitive advantage. Because they're able to ingest all this data, they're able to continuously innovate and adapt on their own business, which helps drive actionable intelligence. Now, the really exciting thing about this company is that it's in a very huge addressable market. We can see space data and analytics. In 2020, the TAM was around 13 billion. However, forecasting to 2025, they project this to be about 40 billion, which is a 25% compound annual growth rate. Now, touching on several of their valuable competitive advantages, one, they have high revisit small sat constellation. So they have a proven small sat design, which is already fully operational with real time space architecture. They're also vertically integrated as they have about 50% interest in a manufacturer, which as they scale would drastically help them be able to drive down their costs. Next, they have a fully operational software stack and they have a proprietary global data asset. Now talking about the growth plan, now from 2013 to 2020, they really focused on just investing in the company. This is where they grew their fully operational space architecture, cutting edge SaaS platform, and started developing their contracts, which helped grow their pipeline. 
Now, from 2021 to 2025, they plan on accelerating this by accelerating the commercial channel and going to market. Lastly, in 2025 and on, they plan on expanding across multiple commercial market verticals. Now, we can see that they already have valuable relationships with a ton of different customers. Now, they're focusing on both imagery, data, software analytics, and engineering and integration industries. Now, they already have good relationships with the U.S. Army, U.S. Air Force, and the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Now, forecasting for the commercial market applications, we can see that there's a ton of different industries from, from energy utilities, insurance, agriculture, and the list goes on. And these all have huge total addressable markets, growing at above 30% compound annual growth rate. Now, BlackSky has three main avenues for the business. They have the Constellation, where they have the small sat constellations. They have their software platform, and they have go to market. So in 2021, we can see that they have about eight small sat constellations. They've already launched their data integration, algorithms, and software platform. And they're now focusing on executing on their backlog to meet substantial defense and intelligence customer demand. They're really focusing on working with the government right now. However, they plan on launching commercial vertical pilots. So to sum it all up, they believe that they're defining the future of real-time geospatial intelligence. They're a first mover in real-time Earth observation. They have a very wide moat. They have a huge total addressable market, around $40 billion by 2025. They have a very strong pipeline of around $1.7 billion. Since they're a software business, they have a very high margin and scalable financial profile with 75 plus gross margins. And they believe it's a very underserved commercial market, which helps them expand their TAM drastically. So with that, let's dive into their financials. So as we talked about earlier, BlackSky's business model is split up into three different products. They have imagery, data software and analytics, and engineering and integration. As of right now, imagery takes up about 64% of their total revenue with data, software, and analytics, 33%. What's good to see though, is that imagery has the highest gross margin around 90%, data, software, and analytics, 60%, and engineering integration, 10%. So in 2020, for the full year, they did $22 million, which is a 50% growth from 2019. However, the gross profit was actually negative 4%, translating to a loss of about $29 million. Now, in 2021, they're projecting $46 million in revenue, a 110% increase, leading to 30% gross profit and still a $39 million loss. They plan on being profitable for the first time in 2022. As the revenue continues to grow, they believe that the gross profits will continue to rise as well. Now, I think it's really important to take this for a grain of salt as we're still very in the early stages. So these are really just their projections which who knows if they're actually able to hit that mark. Now we're just taking a deeper dive into their P&L and to see where they're forecasting. Now the thing that really stands out to me is that imagery is gonna be their main cash cow and they expect that to grow rapidly over the next four years. Now what's good to see is that in 2021, they actually plan on having a positive gross profit around 14 million. And in the light, in 2022, they plan on seeing adjusted EBITDA profitability. So I believe it's really important if you do want to get invested in this company is to really track that, see how they're doing on their profitability margins, as well as keep up to date with how well the revenue is overall doing. And because this company is going public via SPAC reverse merger, it's important to talk about their transaction overview. Now we can see that their pro forma equity value is valued around $1.5 billion, with seller rollover accounting for about 63% and SPAC shares being 21%. Now we can just see where they stack up against other different peers. They're really comparing themselves between new space technologies, data analytics, and the legacy space. Now we're first taking a look of the comparison between Black Sky and new space technology peers. Black Sky actually has revenue compared to Virgin Galactic, Momentous Space, and RST Space Mobile. In 2021, they're actually doing more revenue than these other players, and they have a 30% gross margin profit. Now, comparing them to next generation data analytics peers, we can see that the growth rates from 2020 to 2022 is drastically higher, around 128%, with the average being only about 30%. Now, the gross margin is pretty in line, as it's around 63 to 80%, which is around average of their 77% medium. Now the gross margin is pretty in line with the other competitors, hovering around 70%. So now if we're talking about their price of sales, we can see where they stack up. As of 2022 revenue, it's about 10 times, which is drastically lower than the average of these other industries, as well as their 2023 revenue, which is only about five times, which is still drastically lower than their other peers. So what does this all mean? 
Well, they believe that this transaction is priced at a discount to peer multiples. Now, they believe that their transaction value is trading at a drastic discount at, for the relative valuation into 2022 and 2023. So guys, that was my breakdown of Black Sky. I really like the positioning in this market and that they have a first mover advantage. Now, they have a huge total addressable market, around $40 billion, and since they're a software business, they have a very good gross margin profile. It's also really reassuring to see that they already have $1.7 billion in pipeline of committed contracts. So I believe that significantly de-risks this company as a long-term investment. Now with ARK Space ETF coming out pretty soon, I can definitely see them picking up some shares in the stock. Now, unlike other companies in the space, such as Virgin Galactic, which saw its shares rise drastically, this company already has revenues. And with addition of its $1.7 billion in pipeline, I think this company could be a great long-term hold. So what do I plan on doing with the stock? Well, today, actually, I built a small position. Now, I know I've been recommending a lot of stocks on my channel, and I really like a lot of the stocks that I've been talking about. Now, I have been buying some of those stocks. However, since I've been buying pretty heavily in the past couple months, I don't really have that much cash on hand. So I've been trading in and out of stocks, getting my liquidity up, so I'm able to build positions in these other stocks like this. Of course, I'm not a financial advisor, and you guys need to do your own due diligence when looking into this company. With all that being said, I think Black Sky has a really good opportunity ahead of it, and the risk to reward is definitely favorable. I would love to hear whether or not you guys plan on buying the stock, so let me know in the comment section down below if you do so. With that guys, thanks as always for sticking around, I'll see you in the next video, and let's go get that bag.